Awesome. So we get started. Uh, the theme and timing of this conference is very appropriate. First of all, let me begin by saying that as we are now in the new normal post pandemic, which is more or less of a very, very knowledge based economy than the previous years. Uh, next slide, please. Where we start with one of my favorite quotes. Awesome. So we begin with one of my favorite quotes, which is by Peter Drucker. Now I have followed Peter Drucker quite a bit. <clears throat> He's not only one of the founders of modern management, but he was a key pillar when it comes to management education overall. Let me read out his quotation and then we can look at it from the perspective and theme of this conference. As we advance deeper into the knowledge economy, Drucker says, the basic assumptions underlying of what is taught and practiced in the name of management are hopelessly out of date. And most of our assumptions about business, technology, and organization are at least 50 years old. They have outlived their time. Adding to Peter Drucker's quote, interestingly, when it comes to digital economy, predictions and forecasting in the new normal post pandemic has gone for a toss. As pandemic days, digital consumption was at an all time high. And now it's tough to forecast the future. Also what Drucker mentioned is not only true for management in general or for corporates, it's very much true for universities, course curriculums and education in general, where we as educators need to make sure courses are updated for the latest knowledge. Now moving on to the next slide and relating to the theme of this conference one again, we can move to the next slide, please. Thank you. I presume we all know what Society 5.0 is. Also in the introduction and when this conference was being kicked off, Society 5.0 got mentioned. And that's the reason I'm focusing on what would be an ideal realization of Society 5.0. And I have talked to many people coming from government regulatory bodies, academia, corporate world, and most of them agree that when it comes to realizing Society 5.0, we are aiming at creating a society that uses the innovations of the fourth industrial revolution to solve social challenges in a sustainable manner. The sustainable part is very important here and for the society as a whole. Next slide, please. Moving on. I'm not sure whether we realize that we are in a key moment of history at this time. That is absolutely similar to the first steam engine or the first fire mankind created. I'm sure after 20, 30 years, we'll have stories to tell our grandkids about how first language learning models or first consumer usage of artificial intelligence came about and how we tested in and how we went through the entire journey of artificial intelligence. So in, in a nutshell, we are in a very, very key moment of history and glad that we are experiencing it firsthand, the new AI revolution. Moving on to the new slide, the next slide. Given that the theme of this conference is also focuses on digital transformation strategy amid Society 5.0, I'll essentially focus on manufacturing, education and society in general, and we'll quote some examples and insights from these sectors, which I've pulled on my own. Now, manufacturing itself is a very, very interesting field of study when it goes to digital transformation and society 5.0. The reason is it's one of the oldest industries that has been there since the evolution of mankind. Moving on to the next slide, please. Here we let's take a look at the manufacturing industry in detail. Now, when we look at manufacturing industry for Asia, the top Asian economies, China is of course the largest economy in Asia, followed closely by Japan, India, South Korea, and of course, Indonesia. Now together, Asia contributes around 39 to 40% of the world GDP and organized or unorganized manufacturing so sector contributes to this lion's share of the GDP. Now, as an industry with a lot of history, this isn't the first time manufacturing industry has experienced disruptive changes due to technology. 
the pandemic impacted the industry both short and long term and we can see that technology may ultimately help the industry to recover respond and reimagine just as it has done in the past let's look at some of the previous adverties adversities that the manufacturing industry went through and let's take a look about how global challenges accelerated the trends in the manufacturing industry and brought lasting changes to the industry we look at world war 2 and this is quite a history i mean world war 2 revived manufacturing and assured in an era of women in the workforce in fact from what i know between 1940 to 1945 the us female labor force grew by 50% to a height of 20 million next adversity which the manufacturing industry faced was the 911 which of course highlighted the needs for better physical and cyber security of the industrial manufacturing The 2008 financial crisis increased reliance on global supply chains and a higher utilization of low-cost countries to protect manufacturing profits. Now, pandemic has recently emerged, just a couple of years back, pressuring the manufacturing industry to rethink the speed and flexibility. We have seen manufacturers dedicate new lines, redirect resources, change global supply chains. in a matter of months or even days during pandemic times but the question that still remains at large what lasting changes should we expect coming out of the current disruption so moving on to the next slide manufacturing industry overall faces like big challenges amongst the new normal post pandemic it saw a huge revenue decline of 23% in 202 alone sustainability is another with big challenge for the industry manufacturers contribute to 25% of global carbon footprint which is huge supply chain volatility and disruptions have hit the manufacturing industry in a big way i mean on a very very light note if you tried purchasing a playstation during the pandemic you will totally relate to the supply chain disruptions i'm talking about moving to the next slide facing digital disruption manufacturing companies are in a race to transform their businesses given this context i think as academicians coming from businesses and technology background we need to understand what is impeding or what is essentially blocking the manufacturers from embracing technology and adopting the new normal so we i have pulled out around 6 7 factors here one of the biggest factors is that manufacturing industry has a long rich history if we analyze the top 50 manufacturing companies by revenue the average manufacturing company on an average is 85 years old 85 years old they have a legacy they are set in their own ways and often unable to drive breakthrough performances manufacturers often hold a global footprint with localized or loosely integrated systems that are manually supported these systems operate in multiple languages multiple geographies and they run various divisions the third factor important obstacle from for manufacturing industry to adopt technology is that manufacturers face decentralized decision making this is due to siloed data multifaceted strategies and complex local factors manufacturers also endure competitive capital intensive environments people coming from financial background can easily relate to the capital intensive environment for example manufacturers are constantly in fight for opex and capex so understandably new operational excellence of technology is often a second thought one of the most interesting things which i found out is that manufacturing companies are highly protective of intellectual property billions of dollars are poured into r&d every year in manufacturing in fact over half of the r&d spend is associated with manufacturing which is like a huge figure imagine like whatever the R&D spend is half of it is associated with manufacturing globally so companies are extremely protective and risk averse 
to any potential threat to that investment. Now, manufacturing also grows via mergers and acquisitions without integration. This causes data silos, best practices are ignored or buried in acquisitions, adding another dimension of decentralized decision making. And the last one is the manufacturing industry faces reduced return on investment of optimization efforts. When we talk of continuous operational excellence, many areas of the value chain actually have already met the peak optimization, often optimizing one area of the value chain, sub-optimizing the overall value chain. Moving on, the next slide is one of my favorite slides as it covers history, the present and the future. Now, when we look at this slide, we see that there have been incremental examples in the manufacturing industry, which have led to good incremental operations.